yeah, this is Sabah. This is uh, we are actually at the northern tip of Borneo. We are we used to be known as North Borneo, but we call Sabah now. Can you see the next one? Yes. Now? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is this this map shows the 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 flight hours in terms of Sabah to the rest of the major cities. Like uh, we are like two to two, two and a half hours to Manila, to Jakarta, to Singapore, to Kuala Lumpur, about three to four hours to Taiwan, and maybe four to five hours to Tokyo. That's where we are, yeah? Can see properly now? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Perfect. And then Sabah is directly, actually right at the center of ASEAN, as mentioned, easily accessible by air and uh, to and from uh, global destinations and is ideal location for trading, you know, facilitation in the region, uh, especially in the untaped economy in the ASEAN and the Bimbinga region. Sabah is also known as land below the wind. We actually got about around about 4 million population with very long coastline of about 1,400 over kilometers. And then we are the third largest uh, population in terms of Malaysia with 42 ethnic groups and over 200 sub-ethnic groups. So we are very diverse in terms of culture and, and, and all that. And basically for Sabah economy, we are very uh, actually uh, rich in resources and the uh, primary sectors represent the uh, major uh, you know, economy for, for Sabah. And um, agriculture has traditionally been a, a significant portion of Sabah economy and about 25% of Sabah GDP actually comes mainly from the palm oil and cocoa, among others. And uh, Sabah is also the largest contributor to the agriculture sector in Malaysia. And about 30% of actually the palm oil come from, come from Sabah. Other than, other than that, others uh, will be like crude petroleum extraction, which is the main activity in terms of mining and also quarry. Fisheries and, uh, and aquaculture also make up a portion of the uh, uh, economic activity, as well as uh, tourism, especially ecotourism. I'll come to that. So, in terms of strength uh, in the various sec economic sector, in terms of palm oil, uh, we have the highest CPO uh, extraction rate in whole Malaysia in terms of CPO production. Crude palm oil, we got the highest crude oil reserve with new deep water discoveries. And tourism, our ecotourism products are very attractive because we offer islands, mountain, conservation parks, flora, fauna, culture, sunset, and our seafood. And uh, others would be the, uh, because of the fertile soil, you know, uh, we've got uh, our land in terms of one separate land are really suitable for agriculture. And we are also the biggest cocoa producer. And seaweed, we have also do seaweed production and also uh, fish farming. So in those Sabah ports, actually, uh, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Mark just now, we are actually a 100% subsidiary of a listed core, Surya Capital Holdings, who actually, uh, which in which a uh, state government has got 51% share in Surya Capital. For, for Sabah, we have got eight uh, main sea ports in Sabah, four at the west coast and four in the east coast. And all these ports are under the jurisdiction of Sabah Ports and Bahad. To me, it is an, it is an advantage in a sense because all eight ports are under one management and under one authority, actually. So in terms of uh, the, the, the COVID and the downturn and because of the, the, the world health crisis, we actually do suffer uh, in, in terms of our throughput Although our pot still operate as normal, 724 sale, but last year, and until last month, actually for the whole year of 2020, in terms of the downturn, uh, we actually suffered, you can see in the slide container, uh, a couple of percent and liquid and, and, and a liquid bulk as well, as well as dry bulk and conventional cargo. Um, I just want to quickly show, this, this slide show the total a cargo throughput of uh, Sabah ports and also typically representing the state economy. Uh, as when there is any crisis, global, be it global, state or, or regional, it will actually be reflected in the cargo throughput. As you can see from the graph here, we are also been affected in terms of the throughput handle because typically we normally handle uh, 35 to 40 million tons of cargo. And uh, this cycle, of course, will be affected and probably next year will not be very promising in terms of the, the, the throughput. 
Uh, notwithstanding, life have to go on. We still continue with our marketing efforts and you know economic activity. And uh, why Spanga Bay? In terms of strategy, we want to improve our global competitiveness by pro by providing strong supporting infrastructure and connectivity to and from international market. And uh, we would like to position Spanga Bay as a logistic transshipment hub and add value. Uh, you know, uh, going forward between Kalimantan South. Philippines and North Asia uh, integration of a uh, you know a free zone with Sabanga Bay transshipment hub, and uh, since all the ports are under our control, we can position Sanakan, Ladatu, and Tawau as regional trading hubs in Borneo, and uh, you know we can further expand the role of Sandakan, Ladatu, and Tawau by virtue of the fact that they are so near to our. Donation bordering towns, you know, that part of the economy is, is, you know, in terms of the role of Sanakan and Tao, they're very important there, you know. And then also we can position KK Airport as international A uh, cargo freight trans, you know, transshipment hub as well. And uh, meanwhile, of course, it's very important to improve our infrastructure for road and rail connectivity from the port to the major cities. In terms of the facilities that what we have got now in Spanga Bay Container Port, we are actually a dedicated container uh, terminal, good for half a million for, for, for now. And we're able to uh, handle 500,000 uh, uh, TUs. Uh, we have got uh, a, a wharf length of about 500 meter with 500 uh, a meter access bridge um, for now. but. Uh, but in the, and, and also uh, and now assisting international uh, um, shipping line do call us Evergreen Harbour Line and also uh, Johan, Merce and all that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, in terms of positioning in the Bimyaga region, uh, by virtue of the uh, hinterland potential, uh, we have got a very strategic location as a hub for Brunei, Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East Asian growth region. In other words, focusing on intra-Asia trade, link, linking the region with, with the Far East. Yeah. This is uh, where we are in terms of Spanga Bay. You can see in terms of the sea linkages. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we have international weekly direct calls already. And uh, in terms of expansion of Spanga Bay container port, this is strongly supported by the government. And uh, recently the federal government has actually pledged to pump in 1 billion allocation for the expansion. Uh, the uh, port will be expanded from the current 500 TEUs to 1.25 million TEUs in 2025. So, um, as Spanga is uh, ideally positioned, it is actually uh, potential to become the transshipment hub of the Binyanga region. Um, the immediate transshipment opportunity for Spanga in the coming decades come from the feeder ports in Sabah, Brunei, and Sarawak. Why Indonesia and Philippine ports, the Binyanga region, could also become feeder ports for Spanga in the next uh, 10 years. And this map shows the, uh, the, the, the linkages in the feeder ports and the cost in terms of coastal feeder and also Far East cargo linkages, and including the new emerging economies in the Binyanga. And uh, other than the, you can see from the slide here, other than the Spanga Bay container port on the left side here we are also uh, in the green it is the the expansion plan for spanga container port in the near future we are also uh, planning to build another um, conventional cargo port next to the next to the uh, container port as we uh, we are actually in the midst of planning to move the current uh, general cargo port in kk to spanga bay and in the vicinity is also we are actually currently uh, just started to build the uh, second phase of the Spanga Bay oil terminal, which is actually uh, quite full in terms of facility. So as uh, Spanga Bay actually has got potential to do uh, uh, oil and gas in terms of bunkering, bunkering, yeah. 
And um, talking about uh, the uh, free zone uh, supporting the industries, uh, this development is necessary actually because this is a, you know, uh, talking about economic zone, it would be a magnet, you know, to attract foreign investments to do further downstreaming to also to increase the, our global attractiveness in terms of Sabah competitive, uh, competitiveness in terms of manufacturing. Yeah, actually uh, uh, we are very, in terms of this is a map that shows where we are. Spanga Bay actually is quite close to KKIP. Uh, KKIP, they are planning to do a free threat zone in the area. We also will do one uh, planning for another free threat zone in Spanga, linking the two, two uh, segments. Um, in terms of the attractiveness of, uh, of the future businesses, we have potential for these three park services and uh, this will allow you know, us to do more in terms of the role of the port to allow the port to engage in cost uh, effective end-to-end -end regional and global supply chain management. Uh, and meanwhile, we need to increase the port storage capacity for the cargo and uh, we can actually reduce container utilization uh, uh, in terms of uh, storing all long staying containers at the district park. Um, so actually, uh, we, we, uh, we are actually quite pleasantly su su uh, surprised to, to, to learn that actually, uh, we got announcement yesterday actually, um, SK Nexilis of uh, South Korea had just announced that they are going to set up their first overseas uh, production base in KKIP. And they actually uh, said to have owned the world number one technology in manufacturing copper foil for batteries. And they are going to locate their first factory in KKIP. And they mentioned that they select KKIP because of the excellent infra such as gas, water, and, and uh, you know, high accessibility to the ports and also airports which are very important for, for the export. So that is the latest in terms of the foreign investment into Sabah. So talking about hinterland activity, um, the network connecting Spanga Bay to the East Coast, we have got our own, as mentioned, East Coast port. We can do, you know, fiddle services among these ports. And of course, in terms of the infra, currently there's no railway as yet, but uh, we will, you know, work with the government to propose to, to link up all the ports and major towns uh, by proposing railway network connecting all major economic centers. And of course, as you know, Pan Borneo Highway is ongoing. And, uh, and also, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Saki just now, with the move of the new Jakarta in Kalimantan, that's also, you know, represent a lot of potential in terms of uh, economy of, of Sabah and Borneo that matter. So this one is showing the uh, road accessibility from the ports to the main industry cluster throughout the states. And this represents also the, uh, the Sabah, you know, own hinterland and also the potential hin for beyond Sabah in terms of the hinterland, yeah? So in terms of the opportunity for investment, there, there are actually mass production and manufacturing uh, potential in terms of aerospace industry uh, maintenance for parts, manufacturing, auto industri industry, vehicle production, car parts and all those, and further downstreaming in terms of resource, petrol, oil refinery, storage, and distribution and industrialization needs. Of course, palm oil, refinery and other products, fishery, timber, food rubber. And other, other than the manufacturing, in terms of the potential for, for other businesses, mainline operators, we are talking about hub global shipping lines with intra Asia subsidiaries, uh, specialized in regional carriers, carriers, and then feeder operators. We need uh, common feeders to do the, uh, the the hub and spoke you know, initiative to coastal shipping operators. Free trade free trade zone. The property develop, developer can come in to to do the uh, industry, you know property development, industry parks manufacturing, trading company, importer, exporter, logistic company, agriculture sector, and including financial and equity investors. So these are the uh, potential investment opportunities uh, you know, uh, presented by Sapa. So in terms of our achievement, as mentioned lately, we actually have, um, you know, um, have 
we have external in terms of what we've done so far, recognition. In 2019, November, we've been awarded the APEC Green Port Award uh, due to our uh, green initiatives. And also uh, last year, uh, Global Port Forum, which is based in Singapore, also awarded us as the Southeast Asia Terminal of the Year. And also yours truly, they also selected me as a Woman of the Year for, two, for 2020. Quickly, in terms of cruise uh, potential, cruise tourism, um, in, in fact, uh, in line with Malaysian government initiative, cruise tourism is actually identified to, to be one important uh, economic contributor. And KK Port is actually identified as one of the most you know, promising port in terms of port of call. And this, this slide shows the actual picture of the uh, cruise line, major cruise line who actually ever called KK Port. Before the pandemic, we typically normally uh, handle about two vessels per month. Then uh, you can see that Queen Victoria, uh, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, uh, Sapphire Princess, even Caribbean of the Sea, they actually ever called. And then even like Kenting Group, Kenting Dream is the largest vessel in terms of the fleet. They actually uh, made the Madden call in uh, KK Port in actually 2019. So just before the pandemic, there's this Chinese group actually very, very keen to do a cruise flight uh, initiative uh, touring the whole of Sabah. So because we control the ports, potentially we could do a you know, cruise domestic hubbing within the ports from KK port to Kudat, to Sanakan, to Ladatu and Dawang. But then because of the you know, uh, pandemic, the, the, the plan is actually put on, hold, put on hold for the time being. But I heard they're still very, very keen to come in as soon as everything is over. So uh, in also uh, on the drawing board, we also plan to uh, do international cruise terminal in KK Port, uh, promoting cruise tourism to, to make KK Port into an integrated uh, uh, hub in terms of the property development as well as cruise terminal. So other than that, we will also, uh, although we already uh, receive our award in terms of the Green Port Award, but we will, we will continue our efforts, efforts actually in achieving and maintaining Green Port status. We will continue to uphold best practices and compliance with internet standards for health security. And then we will continue the, the moment we are actually exploring and try to initiate the utilization of green energy. So I like, uh, in closing, I'd like to sum, summarize uh, you know, our main uh, points in terms of why Spanga Bay, in terms of our, in terms of our competitive advan advantages. Um, so number one, we are actually quite blessed in terms of location because we are actually located at the northern tip of Borneo, outside of the Typhoon Belt and the Ring of Fire, actually. Yeah, in terms of uh, geographical location. Um, that's why we are called land below the wind. We normally escape in terms of the like typhoon or that. And uh, we are strategically located near the busiest shipping lanes between Far East and Singapore. And uh, Spanga Bay is expected to, to serve the eastbound trades between Yanga and the Far East. And then uh, Port Klang uh, also, the, you know, it would not the other side of the, the world in terms of they will cover the other side. This is to answer some of the questions, yeah. And also, in terms of connectivity, as mentioned, Sabah is actually strategically connected to Asia major cities. And also, of course, we are strategically located at the center of ASEAN. And uh, the fact that we are in, you know, uh, in charge of all eight ports in Sabah, that represent the advantage because that will render the control of cargo flow and cargo consolidation feasible. And, um, and Spanga Bay container port actually is a sheltered port with very wide access uh, channel and uh, cruise potential is another um, segment in terms of the cruise tourism uh, you know to promote Sabah port uh, Sabah as the uh, KK, especially KK as a dedicated uh, port of call for a few cruise line and and a regular port of call and uh, of course again uh, talking about Bimyaga we are strategically located at the tip of Bim Yaga region. So quite ideal in terms of the location, you know, to, uh, to achieve this transshipment hub of the Bim Yaga. So in closing, I'd like to quote Henry Ford, 
who says that coming together is beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. With that, thank you for your attention.